there was one challenge with what they did. They failed to hedge against the possibility that interest rates would rise. Silicon Valley Bank takes uh, is very, very focused on startups, in particular the tech and biotech sectors. In 2020 and 2021, uh, there was a lot of money being made available in the venture capital space to startup firms. Now, since they don't need to use all that money, they usually park it in a bank, at least until they need the money. The bank of choice for them was Silicon Valley Bank, which has been around for about 40 years. So what ends up happening as a bank is that they've got a huge amount of deposits. Now, when depositors show up, the bankers have to find something to do with that money. So usually what happens is it gets lent out. Uh, and loans can be made either short term or long term, and they can be made to the bank's clients or they can be parked somewhere safe. So unsurprisingly, Silicon Valley Bank that first saw a surge of deposits was suddenly seeing them drawn down. And that meant that they would have to unload some of the assets that they bought with those deposits. Here's where the problems come from. Normally, it's okay to have to sell off some assets because we would expect that as long as they're high quality assets, the price you paid for them will be relatively similar to the price you can sell them for. But that assumption relies fundamentally on the idea that we face the same interest rate at those two different points in time. Now, normally, a bank can deal with this. We don't run into problems every time central banks raise rates. The reason we, this is a problem <clears throat> is because SVB found itself having to sell off some of those assets that were 10 to 15% underpriced. SVB was forced to sell assets early because there was so many deposits being drawn out. And when they sold, they sold at a loss, about 10 to 15% on their portfolio. The market panicked. The fact that a bank said, we need extra money, was enough to terrify all of the bank's customers. And the final thing that really set this waterfall off that resulted in a bank run was that we had two organizations in particular, Founders Fund and Y Combinator, who are venture capital organizations. They, fearing rightly that SVB could run into funding problems, blasted out an email to all of their client firms telling them to pull all of their money out of the bank immediately. In the span of 24 hours, $42 billion was withdrawn from that bank. If you go back 100 years, for, for a bank to collapse due to a bank run, you really have to have a lot of people lining up out front asking for cash until there's no cash left. But in the modern day, where everything can simply be withdrawn digitally, you really can move $42 billion out of one institution in just 24 hours. And that's what led to the collapse at SVB. So we've got a lot of people who are at once both nervous to get in and nervous to get out. And an event like this tends to spook everyone who's nervous. Uh, wisely enough, U.S. authorities got out ahead of this, spent the weekend figuring out what they were going to do. And first thing Monday morning, they rolled out the U.S. president to explain to people that the banking sector, in fact, was safe. That's, the, that's a pretty big gun to bring out, quite frankly, but it goes to show you how extensive the psychological risks are. And so it goes to show you how, how fragile things are at the moment, that there is a lot of concern, there is a lot of worry, and there is potential for things to spiral. I won't say that it won't happen, but that the authorities have taken significant steps to try to limit that kind of terror from spreading. Nonetheless, there is a lot of concern because unlike in Canada, where we have half a dozen banks holding 95% of the deposits, in America, there are literally thousands of banks, and small regional banks are a major feature of their market. In fact, in Canada, every one of our banks is tied to the central bank and has access to emergency liquidity should they need it. In the States, it's about half of banks are part of the Federal Reserve System and thus have access to emergency liquidity. More important than just talk, though, the Federal Reserve actually created a new liquidity facility over the weekend in case any other bank that was in a similar situation found itself in trouble. And the terms are remarkably generous, in my opinion. So this is the sort of thing that very few banks who get into trouble will hesitate to use. And as a result, if we do start to see cracks in other places, we already have the tools in place to start patching those up. Now the key is going to be trying to manage the psychological aspects of retail, which is all but impossible, um, and trying to ensure that anyone, any institutions which remain at risk uh, start taking the appropriate steps today to make sure that they're relatively safe.